Chapter 2 Karma Agabane strode toward his friends, a clear frown on his face. Normally, when people got to him, he refused to let it show, and, thanks to his parents, he was pretty damn good at it. However, Karma looked toward his sliding glass door, where he'd left the little vermin at his kitchen counter. Karma? His friend, Nagisa, called. Is something wrong? You have kind of, uh... The fragile boy trailed off, probably unsure of how to describe his facial features at the moment. Karma forced a smirk, and again, another thank you to his parents. Did it well enough that no one suspected him of being anything other than his usual devilishly handsome self. Hey, Ryo Nakamura, one of his closest female friends, approached him. He watched her as she hauled herself out of the pool, the frozen air around them quickly affecting her body. Hello, Nakamura, he said with slight sarcasm, but he couldn't help it. It truly was just who he was. She smiled faintly. Thank you again. She looked down wringing out her soaked shirt. He hadn't a clue why, since after this conversation, she would more than likely be getting back in, but he ignored it, identifying the pink milk carton on her shirt. For, he questioned, when she had paused for, in his opinion, of course, longer than necessary. His eyes traveled back up to her eyes, inching away from the same carton of milk shirt he had in his room. It was in the only locked drawer in his room. He had almost gone into a daze, thinking about it, when Nakamura decided to continue. You know, for letting Wyan come over. I know you guys don't get along that well, but yeah, thank you. She had gone on a ramble, long enough to make his ears bleed. Had it not been for the person she was speaking of, he almost gawked at her outright but caught himself and instead chuckled. We get along well enough. Then he smiled. For a moment, it looked like Nakamura half expected razor-sharp teeth to replace the very human canines in his mouth. She turned away and dipped her feet into the pool, looked back at him, and smiled. He smiled back, as best he could after talking about that thing, or a person, Karma shook his head, then carefully let himself slip into the heated water. You were finishing your second meat bun when your lungs ached for water. Were you being a bit dramatic with the analogy? Maybe, but it didn't really matter. You pushed off the stool and rounded the corner, aiming for the fridge Akabane had been at just a few minutes ago. Opening the fridge, you spotted water. Not a water bottle, or a few, but loads. Water on top of the water on top of the water. There were no other beverages in the fridge, save for the tasty strawberry milk. Your eyes shone a little brighter as you made to grab the milk. It felt light in your hands, like it would only be able to fill one more cup before the carton ran dry. Shaking your head, you shut the fridge and set the carton on the counter. Then you turned toward the cupboards, toward his cupboards. You could care less that you were digging through his things. If only it didn't make you feel so grotesque. You winced as the white wooden door at the top opened with a loud squeak. Thankfully, you turned back toward the sliding door, which was framed with white swirls that looked like little ballet shoes. But maybe you weren't seeing things clearly. You glanced back at the cabinet, taking in the singular cup that was there. It looked weird, contrasted to the rest of the house. So out of place, you thought it was placed here by accident. Probably a mistake by one of the maids Akabane hired to take care of his kitchen. Gods knew he had the money to hire one. You snorted at your thought. Sometimes you did feel bad about attacking him for having money, 
but that wasn't really the reason you made fun of him for it. It was really because of how he acted with it. So arrogant, like a Gakushu Asano protege. If you didn't know any better, you might have thought your principal had two sons instead of one. You grabbed the cup, moving it between your hands to get a feel of the pink and purple crystals that were embedded within the glass. They felt real. Too real. With how many there were, you set the glass down as fast as you possibly could. They're not real. It's not real. It's just decoration. Just decoration. Although, the more you kept telling yourself that, the more you examined the glass. Which wasn't glass at all. It was stone. Straight stone. Carved into a cup. The cup felt like a weight off your shoulders. You carefully surveyed the room, finding no one. You swiftly replaced the stone cup back to where it had been, almost missing the coat of dust that covered everything but a small circle. Something irked you. Again, you felt as if this cup did not belong here, but the ring of non-covered dust quirked your curiosity all that more. You heard the sliding glass door slide open and had only a breath's moment to set the cup down and close the cabinet before being walked in on. It was that girl with the green hair. Kaide, her name might have been. You shook your head. She smiled and walked up to you. I had to use the bathroom, she said. Might know where it is? You smiled apologetically at her. Sorry. She sighed, pushing off the table. It's fine. She began walking off, with curiosity written all over her as clear as day. Good luck! You shouted. You heard her chuckle a little before disappearing down the hallway. His hallway. Your gut twisted again. You needed fresh air. But first, you're going to drink the rest of this strawberry milk.